Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to chroma key a green screen background so you can delete the background and then put yourself somewhere completely different. There are a few things to know about this that I'm going to show you in DaVinci Resolve, and then I'm going to talk about some other important things to know about green screen. For example, making sure you've not got any shadows or creases in the green screen, and one way you can do that really easily. So stick with me as we go into that. So here we are in a standard project in DaVinci Resolve. And the first step is to obviously get your green screen footage. So here's a sample of me standing in front of a green screen. And what we want to do then is you click on the effects library on the left hand side and under open effects. So click on open effects. First of all, you want to look for something called 3D Kia. You see 3D Kia there. Drag 3D Kia down onto the video track itself. And you should then see a little FX label pop up on that video track. And then over in the inspector, if you don't see this view, click on the inspector at the top here. You should then see effects, open effects, and some tweaks that we can make to the green screen. From this drop down here, it will usually be on transform as standard. You want to then click on that and change it to open FX overlay. Then what we're doing is we're using the eyedropper to essentially just paint so keep your finger down on the mouse button and trace round the green screen anywhere where there is a green area obviously don't draw it over yourself because it will ruin it and then then you have your green screen effect now you can see i've got some green border to me because of the overspill and what you can do is you can use the d spill you might i need to adjust this depending on your lighting situation but you can adjust that and then tweak it. The other thing you can do is you can go into the matte finesse options and you can adjust clean blacks. That can also help improve things. What I'm going to do now is obviously we want to get rid of everything else because we don't want all the rest of the room in the shot because the green screen space is limited. Now, if you've got a bigger green screen, obviously you could keep the whole shot, but we have some options because you could zoom in and then what I also like to do with mine is just to crop. So if we crop from the left and then crop from the right, we now have this chroma area where I am and you can't see the background anymore. And then what we do is we then need a background shot. So actually we recommend now what you do is move it onto a second video track by just dragging it up onto that or right clicking on it and click move track up instead so right click move track up is the other option and i'll move that onto that next line and then what you need to do is to find the footage that you want to use as your backdrop so here is some random footage that i took down by the beach and now you can see we're mostly chroma keyed in now it's not perfect in this instance because you can see if you look carefully there is still some green hue around my hands now this is often down to the lighting perhaps if you adjust despill a bit more that might also help but it's not too bad now obviously you can see if you're outside the range of where the chroma key in is where we've cropped you may well disappear parts of your body so you do need to be aware of that as a potential issue there now you might have some different clips in a different situation if we look at this one for example this is a good example if i drag the 3d key in and then repeat the same process you'll see that i have a problem here because down the bottom right of the green screen is a more green area but if i draw through the boom arm that then presents a problem because it then basically deletes a lot of stuff that you didn't want it to so one of the ways around this is you can obviously completely undo the 3d here and start again we put it back on what we'll do here is you can actually draw up to the top there and then what you want to do is select the plus icon here on the dropper on the inspector and then you can draw more of the areas that you want to delete so that will then add those in and you can do it carefully around the edges like that. And then once again, if we just put some D spill on, it should remove some of the green. And then obviously we can go into video and crop out the other areas as well. 
and then you have a relatively good green screen and obviously you, you may well need to play around with some of these other settings as i said matte finesse might need to be changed for example that just looks a little bit better now than it did before but that will help if you're having issues with the objects in the green screen or indeed if you're having problems with shadows so shadows can be another problem because you need good lighting there are two difficult things to deal with when it comes to green screens in my experience one is shadows so you can see a shadow up here and the other one is creases in the green screens now what you can see behind me is an elgato green screen this is the elgato green screen xl so it's actually really big and that is a retractable green screen that folds in on itself, that so it rolls up, which means that it comes out without any creases in it, and it's always like this, and you can put it away really easily. And there's two versions of this. There's also a smaller one, and that will fold away, and so you don't ever have to worry about ironing your green screen or dealing with creases, because if you've got a crease, that creates a shadow, and then that can play havoc with chroma keying, which can be a pain. The other thing you'll see is shadows, now, lighting is a big, important deal here. As with all video, lighting is essential and good lighting is essential. Obviously, you've probably seen a lot of videos on lighting. If you're doing any sort of content creation, you probably watch some. And if you haven't, then it's all about, you know, key lights and offset lights and hair lights and other things like that. I find that I've got two key lights up above me and they're actually set at different heights. These are Elgato key lights and they're set at different heights and different angles. This one over here, actually off to my left, is angled towards the green screen in order to reduce some of the shadows, because I found if they were both angled at me, I ended up with shadows behind me, which then makes it difficult to chroma key. The one up there is actually purposely higher and offset, because otherwise what you'll see is there's light reflections in my glasses. So when I'm talking to the camera, you end up with lights in there. <laughs> So these are some first world problems, but you do need good lighting in order to deal with it. The other thing is, as well, is to not have the light too bright. So these are actually set quite low at the minute. We're looking somewhere around the 30% mark on those lights. So they're not very bright because the brighter they are, that's obviously going to affect camera settings. But even if you can turn them up brighter, what you're then going to do is get more of a shadow from yourself on the back. And then that will make it difficult to green screen because if this bit's dark and a bit behind me is kind of dark and then over here is really bright, that's going to cause problems and it will look nasty when you try and deal with it. So if you can, another solution is to potentially get another light source shining on the green screen itself. So I actually have a big light over here, which I generally use for other video stuff, but I can show you what I mean with this. So if I turn it on, you can see that now the shadow is gone from this area and that's eliminated that problem. So if you can offset a light to shine behind you and onto the green screen, then that's good. Obviously, if it's too bright, then it's going to be bright over this side and dark over this side. So you do need to account for that and how you're setting it up. But hopefully with these tips, you should find green screening a little bit easier. Lighting is key, avoiding shadows and also making sure there's no creases and then just follow those tips and resolve to chroma key things out. If you found this useful, check out our links in the description to my video on the Elgato Green Screen XL, and thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.